Ghetto Riots in the United States 1964-1969 The term ghetto riots, also termed ghetto rebellions, race riots or Negro riots refers to a series of summer uprisings across the United States in the 1960s characterized by African American groups using violent tactics. The six days of unrest throughout New York City during the Harlem Riot of 1964 is viewed as the first of clusters of riots uncoordinated with each other, evidently unplanned, most often in cities during the summer months. The pattern caused 159 separate incidents of violence and unrest over the long, hot summer of 1967, came to a climax during the national wave of King assassination riots in over 100 American cities in 1968 and relented in 1969. History Background before the ghetto riots of the 1960s, African American resistance to white supremacy was much more limited, including only small slave rebellions and armed defenses in the early 1900s. Most of these actions were defensive in nature rather than retaliatory. It was not until the Harlem riots of 1935 and 1943 that African Americans seemed to take initiative in violent conflicts. By the 1950s and 1960s, significant changes had been made in the order of white supremacy that fostered conditions for open rebellions. Recent urban decay caused by white flight from city centers also antagonized lower class minority populations who had struggled to migrate to cities. Riots The Harlem Riot of 1964 is seen as the beginning of a wave of riots that would engulf New York City and begin to be seen in cities throughout the country until coming in 1968 with the last being the King Assassine. These urban riots were unplanned and mostly attacked property of white-owned businesses rather than people. Before this most American riots involved brutal attacks against minorities. The riots resulted in 130 deaths and over 20,000 arrests. Incidents include Harlem Riot of 1964, 1964 Rochester Race Riot, Dixmoor Race Riot, August 1964, 1964 Philadelphia Race Riot, Watts Riots, August 1965, 1966 Chicago West Side Riots, Ho Riots, July 1966, Waukegan Riot of 1966, Hunters Point Social Uprising 1966, Benton Harbor Riots of 1966, Long Hot Summer of 1967, Boston Riots, 1967 Buffalo Riot, 1967 Cairo, Illinois Riot, Cambridge Riot of 1967, Cincinnati Riot of 1967, 1967 Detroit Riot, 1967 Milwaukee Riot, 1967 Newark Riots, Riots, 1967 Plainfield Riots, 1967 Saginaw Riot, Albina Riot of 1967, King Assassination Riots, April 1968, 1968 Washington, D.C. Riots, 1968 Chicago Riots, Riots, Baltimore Riot of 1968, 1968 Kansas City, Missouri Riot, 1968 Detroit Riot, 1968 New York City Riot, 1968 Pittsburgh Riots, Cincinnati Riot of 1968, Trenton, New Jersey Riots of 1968, Wilmington Riot of 1968, 1968 Louisville Riots, the 1968 Miami Riot grew out of an organized protest, in contrast to most of these previous incidents, so may not fall in the same category. Likewise, the Division Street riots in Chicago of June 1966 shares all the relevant characteristics of these others, expressing similar ethnic tensions and grievances, except the rioters were Puerto Rican, not African American. Perhaps the last of the pattern was the July 1969 York race riot in Pennsylvania, where racial tensions broke out over several days resulting in the fatal shooting of a rookie police officer and the murder of a visiting black woman from South Carolina by a white gang 
after renewed interest in both cases 30 years later. York's mayor, Charlie In August 1969, federal officials considered the period of large-scale riots to be over. Kerner Commission President Johnson appointed a commission on July 28, 1967, while rioting was still occurring in Detroit, to investigate the causes of the urban unrest. The commission's scope included the 164 disorders occurring in the first nine months of 1967. The president had directed them, in simple words, to document what happened, find out why it happened, and find out how to prevent it. While acknowledging the incidents as unusual, irregular, complex, and unpredictable social processes, the Commission was able to identify broad patterns and draw conclusions, the first of which was the civil disorders of 1967 involved Negroes acting against local symbols of white American society, authority, and property in Negro neighborhoods rather than against white persons. The report identified police practices, unemployment and underemployment, and lack of adequate housing as the most significant grievances motivating the rage. Reactions Conservative elements of American society regarded the riots as evidence for the need of law and order. Richard Nixon made social order a prime issue in his campaign for president. The mayor of Jersey City, Thomas J. Wellen, instead saw the riots as an indicator Federal grants for urban renewal and anti-poverty efforts, as in New Haven, were also discussed in relation to the riots. In August 1968, over $4 million were offered by the Justice Department to the states in what was described as the first federal money designated to prepare for and help avert rioting in the cities. In April 1969, John Lindsay asked to increase federal funds, but as of November 1969, the $200 million promised to restore 20 cities had not yet come to fruition. Research, search, search, search. Cause of riots. Many rioters can be seen as disillusioned African Americans whose families may have moved to cities to find better living conditions, but after generations remained stuck in urban ghettos with little economic mobility. Local troubles with access to decent housing and work along with other factors like police harassment made urban areas ripe for violence. Immediate causes were often confrontations between African Americans and aggressive whites or police officers that drew a crowd and began to spiral into violence and chaos. In July 1963, demonstrations in Brooklyn for better working conditions in the construction industry had reportedly risked escalating to riots. Dynamics of riots Rioters often acted collectively, destroying property they viewed as being owned by those exploiting them. Police officers often were seen as the greatest antagonists to rioters because their actions and racist language became symbols of the oppressive conditions faced by African Americans.